if you know what the highest praise is, shout it unto the Lord. If you really know what the highest praise is, shout it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. This place is charged with the spirit of faith and expectation. If I was the devil, I would just get on 349, go north or south or however he decides to go, but I would get away from here because this is a bad place for him right now. This is a bad place. Slip up your hands and let that hallelujah pour out of you for a moment. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Three archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Lucifer. Michael, E-L, Elohim, it's built into his name, Michael. Gabriel, archangel, E-L, Elohim, built into his name, God. Lucifer, no E-L, E-R. That tells you where he's going, to the E-R. If you understand how God works in patterns and numbers and sequences, then you know something right there is off. Because if you got Michael, Gabriel, Lucifer does not fit in the pattern. So I went back and checked the original pattern and was surprised to find that Lucifer, according to Strong's 1699, is not Lucifer, it's Hallel. Now you can ask Siri because she knows some stuff. Because I re-asked her and she got it right. So Siri undoubtedly has been to Bible college. Michael, Gabriel, and Hallel. Lucifer, Satan's original name. You know, he wasn't created to be a devil. He was created to do what you're doing right now. His name was not Lucifer. That's King James. His name, Hebrew, is Hallel. And that is the root word for Hallel. Luyah. His name was built into the highest praise. Do you know you live in a society that takes God's name in vain every day? But I come to let the enemy know, if you're going to take God's name in vain, we're going to take your name and put it back in praise and say, hallelujah. Every time you say hallelujah, you're telling the devil, I got your praise. I got your place. I wish about 150 hallelujahs would go up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, Jesus. Let me read to you out of the book of Revelation, chapter number 8 and verse number 3. I am going to pick up where I left off this morning. I hope that you will do the same thing. You have been. I would rather watch you praise and hear myself preach. Though Sister Goolsby told me when I grow up, I'm going to be a good preacher. You got the two best preachers standing on this platform behind me right now. Bishop Wilson and Pastor Voskis are the absolute two best. I don't know what y'all ever did to deserve one and then the other, but you got Elijah and Elisha at the same time. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him a little bit, just enough. How much? much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. Now hold on. 
they're not just going to send prayers up. They're going to send something intertwined with it. And it's called incense. Up on the golden altar, which is before the throne of God. And verse 4 said, And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers. Tell your neighbor, something's going with these prayers. Tell them it's incense and prayers. I'll read it again. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And he took of the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. I'm going to talk to you just a little bit. I'm giving you part two of where we started this morning. So I want you to pick up right where you're left off. I'm going to talk about changing the environment of your prayers. Or maybe part two of prophetic praise. But I want you to lift your hands up to the Lord because he is in this place. And he is worthy. He's more worthy to be praised than it is for me to preach about him. He's more worthy for us to praise over him. Your job is more important than my job. I'm talking about him. You're talking to him. That's worship. Would you send some incense up before the Lord for just a moment? We love you, Father. I thank you. I am unable. I'm unable. I'm ill-equipped by myself. Let anointing be on me. Let the anointing be on these people. Change lives totally, completely. Fill them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit be in us. Let your anointing be prophetic. Let us speak words of wisdom and knowledge and let people be helped greatly in this place today. We love you. We honor you. You know what to do. Bethlehem Church, just do it. Whew, you know what to do. Just do it. Before you sit down, tell whoever's sitting beside you, say, we're going to change the environment in this place. And they don't hear you good, tell the person behind you, say, we're changing the environment in this place. There's a change that is happening here. It's very simple for me to understand what's going on here, and that is that whenever these prayers got ready to be offered, God undoubtedly said, I don't just want to hear the complaints. I don't just want to hear who's sick. Don't just come telling me what's wrong and what needs to be fixed because a lot of what we apostolics call prayer meetings are nothing more than complaint pity parties. We have a tendency to think that if we can make it sound bad enough that God will feel sorry for us and because we got it worse than somebody else and our thing is such a bad dilemma that we can convince him and twist his spiritual arm to fix something based on how bad we make it sound. I have a news flash for you. When you tell God your situation, you're not telling him anything he does not already know about your situation. The Bible said... He knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. Before you mentioned it, he already knew the dilemma and knew how bad it was. He knows the expiration date on it. So when you spend a lot more time complaining and telling God what they done to you, how they talk bad about you, how they hurt your feelings, and you begin to play the victim, you really back yourself up away from an answer more than you move yourself to the progress of hearing God say, I'm going to fix this. You may have to take a example from what Pastor V said he'd done this morning and say, I've already prayed about it. What I'm going to try to do now, I'm going to start thanking you as though you already fixed it. That's a prophetic praise. I'm moving slow because I know the top's going to come off of this thing any minute. If I put the hammer down, I know what's going to happen. But when you understand that God does not respond to problems, he does not respond to sicknesses, he does not respond to hungry people. If he responded to people being hungry, he would go to Ethiopia right now. 
raise up oranges and apples and bananas and say, these people are hungry. I'm going to raise up corn to feed them all. But God does not move because you got a need. God moves by one thing simply and only, that is by faith. Telling him how bad it is often can convince you that God is not able to do it because we spend more time trying to tell him, no, God, it's really bad. No, God, it's really terrible. But what I come to get you to do right now is to get some incense around your prayers. When that incense was going up, it was covering up the prayers. It was like smoke, the Bible said, that was going up around, intertwined with the prayers. In other words, God says, I don't know what's in that smoke. I don't know what I need to do but I'm so enamored about the smell of the worship and the praise I'm so excited about the glory that they're sending up to me whatever's in their praise I'm going to put my hand in and fix it can I tell somebody you've prayed and cried and agonized enough why don't you try praising your way out now you begged and kicked and complained and talked about it enough. You have said, why me and owe me enough? God said, I'm looking for somebody that can start a fire and just send me up some praise and see if I won't do something. The Bible said, be careful for nothing but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let me say that to you again. This is Philippians 4 and 6. He said, all things by prayer and supplication, but do it with thanksgiving, letting your requests be known to God. In other words, God says, there's a certain way that he does things, and I am just beginning to figure this out at my, at my 47 years on planet Earth, and that is God does not bless people because he likes one person better than another person person. But our God is a God of principle and this used to blow me off. This used to get me messed up because I don't know if you've ever seen it happen but I have watched people who weren't even living right but they would pay their tithes and send their tithes to the church while they were drinking and throwing beer cans in their front yard, but they're paying tithes and sending offering to the church and their business was blessed and they didn't have to worry about nothing. Why? Because God blesses a principle called if you give, it will come back to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Don't get mad at me. I'm going to preach in a moment. But then we got people who would never smoke a cigarette. They would never tell a lie. They would never do a thing like that. But they have a hard time because they're greedy and they're stingy. And they would never go certain places or do certain things. But they appear to be holy, but they're more religious than they are relationship driven. And they can't trust God because they have no faith. And so when it gets time to give, they say, but I got to have it. But let me help you understand, if God will bless a person who ain't even saved, how much more is he going to bless you? I probably wouldn't do it here. I might not. I probably won't. Yes, I probably would. A lady asked me one time, she said, you got to pray. She said, because uh, you praying with these people getting miracles. She said, I need a miracle. I need a financial miracle. And I need this. And that's happened. I said, do you tithe? She said, well, I said, it's a yes or no question. I didn't tell her in front of people. It was a prayer line. She said, well, we just ain't been able to. I said, it won't do me any good to pray God's blessing on you and the answer to getting a blessing is not pray for it you gotta sow for it and he that sows little reaps little but he that sows big reaps big I said my prayer ain't gonna change the mind of God you gotta do your part you don't have seed in the ground what are you saying you gotta send some smoke up you gotta know what God likes brother 
Claypool made this statement years ago and I have taken it and stole it from him. If you see me doing good, please don't hurt me and please don't be jealous of me. It ain't always been that way because God does not bless you because he likes you. He blesses you because you're doing something that he likes. When you see God blessing people, it's not because he says, not you, not you, no, not her, no, not them, no. Oh, here's one that I like. No, God says if there's somebody that's sending up the right thing in the middle of their trouble, it just amazes God that they say, here they are, sick, got a headache, arthritis, osteoporosis, but they're not even mentioning that. They know my name is more important than the name of their sickness, and God says, and I like that. I like the fact they got faith in an answer more than they got faith in a problem. What is it? I'm going to give you 30 seconds right now to say, God, I'm about to offer you some prophetic praise. I'm going to offer you a hallelujah in the middle of my hell on earth. You can accelerate your answer if you'll quit praying about it and start praising about it. You can accelerate a revival if after you get finished praying about it, start think everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. I'm gonna preach a little bit tonight. I feel like preaching a little bit, but can I tell you what the Lord told me to tell this church? Y'all don't want to know. Y'all be seated. Y'all don't want to know. Don't, don't throw an egg at me. I'll seek the bishop on you. The Lord said, tell them if they'll start going out or coming in the way they've been going out. We come in and once it hits big, we go out saying, praise God. Wouldn't that something? What a service, my God. But the Bible did not say go out giving praise. It said enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me today and said, tell Bethlehem, if they'll start coming in the way they've been going out, they'll go out different than the way they came in. Tell them if they'll come in and don't wait on a singer, don't wait on a keyboardist. Don't wait on a preacher. Come in and say, I didn't come to pray about it. I come to, if you'll come in the way you're leaving tonight, you'll leave healed. You'll leave filled. You ought to try it right now and say, God, I'm going to show you how I'll be coming Wednesday night. I don't care if it is on a webcast. Wednesday night, I'm coming in the way I'm leaving. You can be seated. In the year 2000, there was an a astrophysicist, a scientist, way smaller than me. His name was Dr. Luau Wang, and they were experimenting, and they had what is called an anomalous uh, refraction or an anomalous dispersion. Anomalous means something that deviates from the norm. It's not normal. It's an anomaly. A dispersion or a refraction is something that determines the rate at which that thing is distributed. And Dr. Wang and his research team in the year 2000, they were able to exceed the barrier of the speed of light. And this is how they done it. They filled up a vacuum with casein gases and they fired a laser beam. They shot a laser beam from one side of a tunnel to the other. But because they had changed the environment, tell your neighbor, you must change the environment of your prayers. They changed the environment. It was not in a vacuum alone. They had put something in the tunnel. And when they put these casein gases in it and fired that, that, that laser, that laser light that would normally take 0.2 nanoseconds to pass from one end of that chamber to the other, they found that it arrived 62 nanoseconds earlier than it would have under normal circumstances. Tell your neighbor, these are not normal circumstances. And this is what they said. And when I heard them say it, I fell out. I said, There's, I'm like you said, Bishop, there got to be a way to preach this somehow. Because they said it went so fast when they left point A to get it to point B. They said it went so fast until the people who were receiving it said, we don't understand this. It's physically impossible. We saw it get here before we saw you send it. 
They said, so what do you mean? They said, you can't do that. They said, no. They said, they said, we heard you say three, two, and before we heard you say one, it was here. Then we heard you say one. They said, the light outran your voice. We know you said one, but when you said one, it passed up your voice and it got here before we heard you say it was even coming. And I read about a God that said, before they call, I will answer. Why? When you change the environment of your prayer and you put praise on it, when you put worship and faith, do you know what's in here right now? It's holy smoke, folks. Whenever you change the environment with glory unto the Lord our God, it will accelerate your answer and it'll get he said, before they call, I will answer. And while they're yet speaking, I will hear. I'm halfway there. Listen to me. This, this, this. I, I was preaching the other night and, and I walked back. I, walk, I started walking back to a couple that were sitting back here. And when I got back there, I'd done something I don't typically do. I took my microphone and I shoved it down in my pocket. And I told the man and his wife, I said, sir, ma'am, I'm going to pray for you. And I said, the Lord told me to tell you that you are not going to lose anything. But that you, sir, are about to get the best paying job you've ever had in your life. Now, if you don't think God is concerned about those kind of things, you just limited him. I'm just going to tell you how I preach. I think God wants his people to have the very best as long as he knows it won't keep you out of church and it won't make you backslide. I'm going to have to come up here because I'm too short to say that. The reason some of y'all are not so blessed is because if God blessed you with a million dollars right now, you would be in a million dollars debt before the year was out. You would backslide. You would run off and run around with some woman. But God wants to know, if I bless you, would you continue to do what you're doing right now? The only way some people can live for God is to be broke. I said, sir, ma'am, I said, God is about to bless you. You're going to get the best paying job you've ever had, and you're not going to lose one thing. When I said that, the lady fell out crying, and the man come out of his seat. He started twirling like this. How I saw the bishop doing her. He is doing a circle, and he takes off, runs around the church, running around the building, and, and just leaves me there. He takes off, and the pastor come up to me. He said, hey, bro. He said, what did you say to that man? That man don't typically act like that. I said, I told him that I felt like the Lord said they're not going to lose anything, but he's about to get the best paying job he ever got. When I said that, the pastor cut a circle and he took off running around the church chasing the man. They made a couple laps. That man got back the pastor got back to me weeping and crying. He said, bro, he said, I don't know if I believe in all this or not. He said, but I'm going to tell you, you're right today. He said, because that man lost his job about nine months ago. And they are about to come take everything he's got. He said, he, they got papers. They're going to take their house and foreclose. They're about to take their cars. They're about to take everything they got. He said, if anybody needs to hear that word, it is that man right now. That was on a Sunday. On Tuesday, you got to listen. I'm talking about changing the environment of your prayers. And, and so on Tuesday, me and that pastor, well, he took me out on his boat. We're sitting out on the boat talking and the pastor's phone rings and his phone rings and he starts weeping and crying. He says, he keeps looking at me saying, Brother Johnson, you're not going to believe this. He puts it, I said, yes, I will. He puts it back to his ear. He's talking. He said, Brother Johnson, you won't believe this. I said, yes, I will. I will believe it. He said, he said oh my God. And I said, oh, all of a sudden I realize he is very emotionally charged. He, he says, oh my God. And this goes on for like five or 10 minutes. He said, I said, hang up so I can believe it. 
He said, he said, uh, he couldn't hardly put a sentence together. He said, bro, he said, let me tell you. He said, the man that, that that word went to on Sunday, he said, you don't understand how bad this is for these people. He said, that man's about to lose everything, but he went on a job interview this morning. And said, but when he got to the job interview in Indianapolis, he's trying to get on the elevator. And he said, the elevator would not open. Couldn't get the elevator to cooperate. He said, so a man come up to him and said, uh, sir, can I? I help you? He said, well, I got a job interview, but I can't get the elevator. He said, well, you can't ride that elevator if you don't have one of these cards. You got to have one of these clearance cards. That you got to have a lanyard with a card to scan it, or you can't get on that elevator. They didn't tell you that? He said, they didn't tell me that. He said, but I got you. He said, let me just scan mine. Said He scanned his card. He said, I pushed the button again. It opened, and the man said, you want the fourth floor. Good luck on your job. He said, I I ride the elevator up. He said, the elevator door opens. I step off the elevator and he said, I am immediately met by about four women that are asking me, who do I think I am? Where did I come from? And why I don't have a security badge on? And he said, I told them I'm here for a job interview. She said, no, sir. She said, you only come here if you work here. Bishop got he said, well, she said, you got to go to another place on the other side of Indy and put an application in before you can come over here. You only come here after we have hired you and okayed it. And so they sent, he said, man, I, I leave. I go back down, get in my car, 10 miles other side of Indy. He said, I'm filling out the application. My phone rings. He said, it is the lady from the place I just left. And she says, are you the man we talked to? But yes. And he said, she said, well, listen, we need you to come back over here. He said, lady, I'm just, you know, 10 miles other side of India. That's not 10 miles through Pot's camp. He said, I just come way over here. She said, well, we need you to come back right now. We need to talk to you. He said, but I'm filling out the app. She said, leave the application alone and come back right now. He said, I get in my car and I drive back. He said, when I get there this time, he said, there's a lady waiting for me. And she puts this thing around my neck and says, uh, I want to ask you a question while we're getting on this elevator. Said she scanned. She says, uh, how did you get on this elevator earlier? He said, well, he said, a, a man helped me. She said, oh boy. She said, listen, she said, nobody is to ride these elevators without clearance. You got to have that car and you got to be cleared. She said, they're going to ask you about it. He said, now here I am. I'm fired and I ain't even got hired yet. He said, I get off the elevator. The lady brings me over here. She says, sir. She said, now, earlier, she said, you were here, right? Yes, ma'am. She said, well, tell us uh, one thing. How did you get on that elevator? Who did you ride with? She said, I didn't ride with anybody. She said, well, how could you get on that elevator and come up that elevator? Because that elevator does not work unless you scan a card. Tell us. And she, he said, ma'am, he said, there was a man that helped me get on the elevator. She said, what man? He said it was a short, bald-headed man with a suit and tie. She said, sir, we don't have no short, bald-headed man with no suit and tie that works on that floor. And said if we did have a man like that, he would certainly know if he scanned that card and let you ride that elevator that he would be fired because you cannot do that. And she said, besides that, the security team is sitting over there watching and they only saw you trying to get on this elevator and you pushed and pushed and eventually you got on. How did you get on here? He said, ma'am, I promise you, there was somebody help me. She said, well, I don't know what to tell you except this. She said, we want to offer you a job, but if you can keep your mouth shut or we're all going to lose our jobs. He said, I just got a job making more money than I ever made and I get to be off for church. What are you saying? When did he get that job? He didn't get it Tuesday. He got it on Sunday when he started sending up praise. What you do right now makes the God of tomorrow go into your next week and say, I got an angel that will stand guard. I will open doors that no man can open and shut doors that no man can close. And you got about 35 seconds right now to put a praise on that and tell the Lord, I want to send up prophetic praise.
come on, I'm seven eighths of the way done. But what you need to do right now is say, God, I'm not going to wait till you do it and prove it to me. I'm going to praise you in advance. I'm going to accelerate the process. I'm going to do something now that'll make a difference later. Hey, Tebrakata. I'm going to start praising you now for what I need you to do next week. I can't wait. I can't wait. I don't have time to wait. I need you to do something now, Lord, so I'll praise you now. Wherever you're standing in that aisle praising God right now, I want you to thank him for a healing. Mr. Media Man, put Isaiah 53 and 5 up there, please, sir, while we're gathering ourselves up here to give the Lord Jesus prophetic praise right now. When they put it up here, I want you to point to it like you did this morning at God's good word here. This is Isaiah 53 and 5. Y'all probably know it and you can probably quote it. It's powerful. It's one of the most powerful verses in the Old Testament. But look at your neighbor and say, you're about to find out what it really, really, really means. So you don't know what you're fixing to know. But when you know what you're fixing to find out, you better make some room because I'm about to praise God about this revelation of change my life. Isaiah said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes were healed. Look at me, folks. In 30 seconds, everything's about to change in your life. How can you say that? Because one revelation can change all your frustration. Point at it again. Are you ready? Isaiah was a prophet. Isaiah lived 700 years before that was fulfilled. Isaiah lived 740 years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But when he wrote it, He did not say anything shall happen one day 700 years from now and it'll be like this. When he wrote it, he said, but he was. He said, when God gives you a word, you got to convince yourself by faith. That's already happened then. That I'm all, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed. And he ain't even been on the cross yet. He ain't even took one cat of nine tails. But the prophet said, it's as good as done. Why? When God says a thing, you can start praising now for what's gonna be fulfilled later. Woo! I don't think I gotta beg you to praise him right now. If you need the Holy Ghost, you gotta praise him now for what he shall do later. Praise him now for what he said he would do. I hear the Lord say, praise me for what I told you I would do. Worship me over what I promised you. If you know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, start doing that right now. If you don't, raise your hands and start worshiping and you will speak in other tongues. It's, I'm telling you, you're already healed. I'm telling you, you already got the job. I'm telling you, your kids are already on their way. It ain't coming. Brother Brian Henderson, it ain't coming. It's already here. It ain't on its way to South Haven. It's already there. Revival's not coming too much, two weeks. It's already settled in heaven. Praise him now. Brother 
Rakese Brakite Brakoto. Pebra Casita Brakasha. Pebra Casita Brakata. There's angelic activity in this church right now. Why? Because they get involved when there's incense going up. They're involved with the glory of the Lord where the prayer cloud is. This brother standing by, Brother Kelly Mack, right there, that man. That man, yes. Was there somebody standing beside you all ago? Are you by yourself? Your wife is here? Where's your wife at? Hey, catch hands. Y'all two catch hands. I glanced over there a minute ago in my spirit. Not standing here, I've seen it physically, but in my spirit, I saw an angel standing behind these people earlier. And I asked the Lord, I said, what is that? It's right before you and me come up here. I was standing over there, I said, Lord, what is that? The Lord said, that is an angel of prayer that'll be sent to nations. Not just this nation, but to nations. And he, what's his name? Pastor Martinez. Pastor? Pastor Martinez. He just told me that he's Pastor Martinez. And Pastor Vasquez told me this part, that he pastors a Spanish work y'all have. But it's going to do more than just explode over here. That thing's about to explode. See, that's how you get a word to come to pass. You don't even wait, let them finish saying it. You just start saying, well, I praise you for what you said you would do. I don't need to see the proof. I need to see the faith. Pastor Martinez, there are some people who God is going to supernaturally, it will be a miracle for this to happen, who are going to supernaturally be transplanted from that other country over to here. It is a work in progress that looks like it would take years or months or be impossible, but God is going to relocate people to that work. God is going to bring people across country lines and across state lines, and they will come here and be a facilitator and a helper of that revival. My God, I see that thing around them again right now. Shikabra. Sister Martinez, help, help Sister Martinez come here. Let me have your hand, Sister Martinez. Lay your hand on Sister Martinez's head here for just a moment, Elder. We're going to pray over them right now. Whenever Sister Martinez is praying in her house, That angel is standing behind that chair. She got a place in her house and a chair in her house. And I'm looking down on it right now and that angel is there. And as she prays for these people, God sends that angel from one place to another place. And that angel is in this house right now. And if you don't believe in angels, you don't believe in Jesus. Because an angel said, call his name Jesus. Can I help you understand something? I said it this morning, I'm gonna say it again. There's a multicultural revival about to hit Potts Camp. They're coming from north to south to east to Hatelebahataya. Itolaboko Shatalabahaya. Ibroko Sekebrahase. Ibroko Sotobroko Tatalabaha. I wish I had a praiser that would say, I don't need a keyboard to help me do this. I don't need anybody to suit me up here. I just know. I'm sending up incense. Take
take somebody by the hand, lift it to the Lord while my brother's running to that keyboard. Just take somebody's hand, lift it up to heaven for a moment. God's about to pour the Holy Ghost on us here. Something's about to be poured out on us right here. Come on, don't wait on me. Send up incense. I hear God saying, tell them they prayed enough. They begged enough. They fasted enough. They've asked and asked. Tell them to praise me for it. Tell them to show me the spirit of faith. Tell them to send up with their prayer incense. Whatever you need healed in your body right now, ask the Lord. I want to praise you for it, God. I want to thank you for realigning my spine. I want to thank you right now for touching my kidneys. Somebody's getting a healing in your kidney right now. Somebody's getting a healing going down in your urinary tract right now. Your kidneys and your urinary tract is going to be different after tonight's over. You're being healed. You're being healed. You're being healed. When I, what's happening over there? I'll tell you what's happening over there. Their praise got God's attention. There's angelic activity all over that place over there. My big brother standing straight at the sound booth right back here with this blue suit on, purple shirt like mine, tie facing me right there. Straight your hand at me. Are you not married? You're married? Did he say he's married? I want you to do something right now. I want you to call the name of your wife to the Lord when I start praying, when I'm gonna pray. Is she not here? When I start praying over you right now, I want you to call the name of your wife because what God is about to do is set you apart as he already has. You've been set apart, but you're about to become very busy in kingdom business. You're gonna become very busy in kingdom business. There's been a delay of sorts of things, but God told me to tell you, the switch is about to turn back on. And you and your wife, I'm sure she's beautiful. I'm sure she's lovely. But you and your wife are about to get a miracle in your house. I'm talking about additions coming. I'm talking about something being birthed in your home. Whatever her name is, I want you to call her name right now. Somebody run back there. Yeah, Brother Henderson, lay your hand on him right now. God said something's about to be birthed. More than just a ministry. More than just a kingdom business. There's coming a change. There's coming a change. God said there's coming a change. There's coming a change. There's coming a change. Get ready. They told me that, what is her name? Be Free? Be Free meets at five o'clock. And uh, a big strong guy asked me today, he said, would you pray for Be Free? There he is. Would you pray for Be Free? Or would you come over and pray for Be Free? I said, I'm gonna do better than that. We all gonna pray for Be Free tonight. I think he said something like 30 something people and be free. But that thing's getting ready to triple and quadruple and grow. I'm not at all saying, where's Sister V at? I'm not at all saying, name it this. I don't know where Sister Vasquez is. Sister Vasquez, stretch your hands towards them right here. 
I see you. God, I'm not saying name it this. I'm just telling you in my spirit what I'm seeing right now, and we're going to praise God about it because it's supernaturally going to happen. But God's going to give, be free, a Sarah's house. A house where expecting mothers that don't have nowhere to go. Women that are abused and battered. Shebrahata. I want everything in here that goes to be free to raise up your hands right now. If you're a part of be free. Come on, if you're a part of be free, if you go to be free at five o'clock. I'm going to give y'all a word from the Lord, then we're going to just go loose praying for people, all right? I am going to have to do one little thing before we pray for y'all and do what we're going to do. And I'm not coming to you. You're going to do this yourself. There are people here, some of you are in be free right now. Some of you may not be. But you are dealing with a series of attacks in your sleep like nightmares of something coming into you and trying to disturb you and give you strange images while you're trying to rest and sleep. It's coming into your house to violate you and to harass you while you are trying to sleep. And it's happened even the last few nights you've already had it. And this thing is going to stop tonight. Why? Because we said so. In an environment like this, Hebrasa, Brokinde, Le Kingdom. I know who two of you are, but I would not embarrass you. I know who to call out and who not to. I don't want to embarrass you, but I am going to tell you this. I want you to do this. I want you to take both of your hands and put them on your own head. Those of you having nightmares, put your hands on your own head. Lay your hands on your own head. If you're having nightmares and panic attacks and these things are coming to you while you're sleeping and you're seeing images and things coming to your bedroom and you feel stuff, shadowy figures around, I come by to tell you tonight by the power of the blood of Jesus by which you were baptized in his name, we shut the door on that demon. We shut the door on that tormenting spirit. Leave that man leave that woman turn them loose and come out of them right now by the authority of the name of Jesus take your hands off your head and lift your hands to the Lord and let a shout come out of you for a moment you are free you are free by the power and the virtue of the Holy Ghost you're free by the power and the virtue of the Holy Ghost come on start praying in it right now start praying in it right now if you're in be free I want you to get as close to these steps as you can be free come here I'm going to show you something be free come here come here come here come up here come up here come up here come up here I'm going to show you how to really get completely free if you're in be free come here and turn that way 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 be free I'm about to help you get to another level of freedom don't get mad at me. I'm not rebuking you. Be free. I'm just going to show you it's time to go to another level. Be free. Just listen to me. Be free. You've been coming to this church because it's been helping you and it's been praying for you and it's been doing a service for you and we're happy about it. But tonight something's going to switch and it ain't going to be us praying for you. It's time for you to start doing what we're doing and start praying for us. God's ready to help you get people free like you're free be free be free stretch your hands to these people and let God start using you right now come on it's not about just touch me Lord let me touch somebody come on church reach in there and pray with them there you go young men pray with them there you go young ladies pray with them come on be free open your mouth right now hey break it come on reach in there If you need the Holy Ghost, receive it right now. If you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, receive it right now. Come on, be free. Open your mouth and pray. 
open your mouth and pray. in the Holy Ghost for that person next to you right now. Right now, there's a great deliverance happening. The next deliverance you be free people are getting are not just drugs. It's not just alcohol. It's not just nicotine. God is going to deliver you from insecurity, being worried about what people think. God's going to use you. Some of you will preach. Some of you will become preachers. Some of you will become leaders. Some of you will become prayer warriors. God's delivering you now from a spirit that says you'll never be like everybody else. I defy every devil for such were some of us but we've been washed we've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus oh put your hand on somebody pray on them right now if you need the Holy Ghost if you need the Holy Ghost right now put your hands up open your mouth if you need the Holy Ghost put your hands up right now if somebody's standing by you that needs the Holy Ghost I see it falling on this lady back here if you need the Holy Ghost raise up both your hands if you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost raise Raise your hands. Open your mouth. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, speak it with me. Some man, speak it with me. Oh, what are you doing? I'm sending up incense. Oh, shake la mahaya. Ile besiki. Ele masate. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Receive it and be healed right now. Receive it and be healed right now. Be healed in your body right now. Be healed in your body right now. By his stripes ye are. By his stripes you already were. By his stripes 2,700 years ago, the prophet said, by his stripes you are. I wish you'd turn, lay hands on somebody and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. It's prophetic prayer. It's prayer that don't ask for nothing. It's prayer that declares you are healed. You are filled. You are delivered. Come on, I'm coming back to it. Some man that's been having a problem in your urinary tract, in your kidneys, that you're going to feel something in you burning right now. God's taking that infection out of you. God's taking that disorder out of you. Be healed by the blood of Jesus. Be healed right now and praise him for AK. We're not asking, we're declaring. That's what prophecy is. It gets the mind of God and it says this is what he already done. Come on, stand right there. We're going to pray for you, darling. 
Brother, just play on that keyboard. I want you to pray stuff you've never learned. Just pray prophetically. Just pray. Just follow. Just follow. Just follow the Lord right now. Something's happening in this place, folks. Heaven's coming down.
If you're in here and you're not baptized in the name of Jesus, don't leave this building tonight without letting them take you to water to baptize you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen what I want you to do right now. There's just a stillness. There's a lingering here right now. Just close your eyes and slip your hands to the Lord. We're just kind of waiting on him right now. This is a lingering presence of God. Yeah. Oh, things happen at this point that don't happen at other times. Sometimes you're like Joshua. You're just hanging around a little later. Just love him for a moment. Keep your hands up towards him for just a moment. If you're here and you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus, please come let us know. If you'll be baptized in the name of Jesus, it will apply the blood to your life. It will apply the name to your life. It will cancel and shut the door of the devil's free access in and out. It'll tell him there's a code and you don't have it. Hey, if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus, come running down here. God's filling people with the Holy Ghost right now. God's filling people with the Holy Ghost tonight. Don't leave without it. with somebody close to you. Begin to declare the promises and the blessings of God over their life. Oh Lord, we thank you for your presence that's here right now. Pray for their needs. Pray for their spirit. Pray for their mind, body, soul, their family, their relationships, their finances. Declare the blessings and the glory of God over their life. Speak faith over them. Speak faith over them and their family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, that's right. Go ahead. Keep on praying one for another. There's been praise and now there's prayer. They're mingled together in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving one more time for what he's done and doing in this place. God, we thank you because you've smiled on us with your presence. That's right. Thank you. Thank you for filling people with the Holy Ghost, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for touching lives tonight. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer, for miracles and healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wednesday night at 6.30.
You don't have to worry. If you're coming from work, don't worry about it. Just come from work if you have to. Next Sunday morning, Sunday night, Brother Robin Johnson back in revival right here at Bethlehem. Amen. Bring somebody that needs the Holy Ghost. Bring somebody that needs deliverance. Bring somebody that needs a miracle. Bring somebody that needs healing. Amen. You can pray as long as you like. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.